The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. Show. And good morning, you're listening to the Big Dog, WIFO-FM in Jessup. Happy New Year to you from the Big Dog. Here we are on this second day of January 2019, and uh, we appreciate you tuning in to us here in the new year. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear by Murphy Builder Supply, located on Northeast Broad Street. Also brought to you by the Wolf Animal Hospital on West Cher- uh, Cherry Street and by the Women's Health Center in downtown Jessup on Cherry Abroad. And Happy New Year, Bob. Happy New Year. How are you doing? I'm good. We're not doing good this morning, Bob. We're Bulldog fans. We got beat. How did that happen? Did we miss our quarterback that bad? I'm just glad I didn't get stomped by Devo. That was the scariest thing I ever saw in my life. I thought the cow was going to stomp. <laughs> that would have been a disaster. <laughs> he came so close. you seen the video? No, I haven't seen the video. What did he come close to? Stomping. Ugh. They tried to get a picture with the cow. Two of them together? Yeah, and the cow took off. And, Uh-oh. And Ugga luckily was quick and able to escape. <laughs> Ugga got out of the he way. He barely huh? got away with his life. I thought the cow was about to stomp him to death. Oh, <laughs> that, would have been a disaster. <laughs> that would have been a disaster. But it went downhill from there. That was like an omen for the game. Yeah. So, I mean, Georgia just didn't play at all. Well, I mean, well, we're I down mean, a couple just, touchdowns. Did come back I mean, to make some somewhat of a game. Silly mistakes. The punter going down on his one knee. And, you know, just the interception. Kind of Fromm didn't play well. The running game was a disaster. I don't know what was going on with DeAndre Swift. Kept fumbling the ball. I mean, he just, I don't know. It looked like, I don't know. People I watched the game with, we said the same thing. A little later, there's too much partying going on on Bourbon Street the night before. <laughs> they didn't look, well, you know, we've talked like about that for years. All. Sometimes in these ball games, one team shows up. And the other uh, one doesn't. Well, the sad thing is they talked all that smack about being, you know, and that's what bothered When I saw those stories last week about, you know, when Notre Dame got crushed by Clemson, and they started yapping about they should have been in the final. You know, I said, yeah. go, t- go take care go of take business care of your own first. Business, yeah. Start talking on social media. So, just sad. This was not a good game. Kirby no. wasn't happy at all after the ball game. Just not, yeah, not, he's uh, good. Not, very frustrated. But they're, I said they're having a great recruiting year, a lot of talent coming back. Yeah. As I said, they're real young on the offensive and defensive lines. So there's recruiting's going well. So they should have another good year. But Just hate losing the last two games of the season. It just was sad to see them not. You know, to be out physical about it. I mean, te- you just yeah, tell that's us, what the Kirby said. Yeah. They just you just tell they, Texas Texas players won the game. They wanted it, the game it, more. It, it meant more to them than it did us, which that's the sad thing. We were supposed to go out there and send a statement, and we're you know it's going to be interesting to see where they do wind up in the, the last poll of the year. You yeah. know. Well, they always say it's not the size of the dog in the fight; it's the size of the fight in the dog. And and they, the, the cows had more fight in them than uh, I mean than they, we had in our dog. They did a good job fighting their way to get back in it, and it had a chance yeah, at the end. But they just you know they just let it get out of hand early, and just they just you said they just weren't in the game. They just weren't ready to play. So that's kind of disappointing as a Georgia fan, but. Right future, Lock County. The, the big issue is going to be Justin Fields. Is he staying? Is he not staying? Is he going? You know, what's what's the story? Is he going to get a waiver? Is he not going to get a waiver? So they got to well, get that. Issue. Get a waiver. They got to get that issue resolved. Off. The, you know, I just wish they stopped talking all this garbage before the game because all during the week he's practicing. He's going to play. He's going to play. He's going to play, and then he doesn't play. Well, quit lying to the kid. He's not going to play. Yeah. Quit telling him he's going to play. I mean, no wonder he's going to transfer. They keep lying to him. They keep telling him he's going to play, and he's mm-hmm. not playing. So, But he, he, we talked about all year long. If you're going to play him, then play him in a series. Don't play him one play and yank him out. Yeah. You know, give him a series. Give him a quarter. Do something. But you know, they got to get that issue resolved. But most likely after the frustration of not seeing the field at all, I'm sure he's going right. to be looking Didn't for see the... ways to get out of Athens. Now, Fong did end up with three touchdown passes, didn't he? Yeah, but he played He played bad. He I played mean, bad. He, he, had a, he had a wide open receiver and he just overthrew him by 10 yards and threw another interest. I mean, he just, he did not play well. Mm-hmm. And that was the ser- that was the story this year, too. When Fromm doesn't play well, we're not going to win. <laughs> he, he played bad at LSU, got whipped. Played bad in this game, got whipped. I mean, he... He's, he's normally on target. Plus, they had a lot of receivers drop a lot of balls out, too. Oh, I mean, there are a lot of receivers. I mean, I don't know what's going on with the receivers. They just kind of. But why the offense coordinator doesn't understand? You got 
two of the most talented tight ends in the nation, and he just doesn't. I think Donald had one catch. One time, I think they threw to him one time. Just that, one time to the tight end. That guy's a beast. I mean, remember that night, Isaac Nauta, because he's going to be like Gronkowski in the NFL. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. If you got a Gronk on your team, and, 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 and NFL, throw to NFL team's going to draft this guy, and he's going to be a superstar in the NFL, and George is going to say, how come we didn't use that guy? <laughs> how come we didn't throw to him five, six times a game? <laughs> okay, you can always text us with uh, questions and comments at um, our regular business line. It's text enabled 912 427 3711. 427 3711. Someone just texted in, just popped up here on the computer screen. Bob, I thought the absence of Mel Tucker was hurting us, but our offensive line was missing blocks all night. We looked bad all night. Kirby's in charge of that defense. They didn't have anything to do with it. Let's say we just laid an egg. And we say that all year long. Well, he's talking what? about offensive line was missing blocks all night. Yeah, he's talking about defense. Well, he's talking Mel about the Tucker. player, Mel Tucker, yeah. That's the defense coordinator to the left. He took the job. Oh, was he? Yeah. Okay. Kirby's in charge of the defense. Yeah, Kirby's lost, the defense. Lost to Mel Tucker had nothing to do with it. Yeah. I said, we just didn't show What about the loss of our, well, our star cornerback who decided not to play? Nah, Did that have anything to do with it? Nah, nope. Nah. No, no. No passes to the... The tall receiver had... A two-point conversion. That's about it. He, he right. didn't. He didn't have a big impact in the game. Okay. All right. I said. The bottom line: we just didn't show up to play. I mean, to get our physical by Texas was an embarrassment. I mean, they just they were just pushing are. us all around. I mean, it was the seventeen nothing. I mean, we're the ones. The that mistakes were bad too. I and mean, we just couldn't. We couldn't run the ball. That was the most. Most of you know. Well, we, that's why they just said the offensive line was missing their blocks all night long. We had the SEC in rushing all year long. We had 29 yards at halftime and on 20 carries, 20 for 29. I mean, that's that was the most glaring stat of the, the first half. Which so. means it looks like to me, if we're missing our blocks all night long, that we got out coached. The most disappointing, the most disappointing thing to me was they, they they interviewed the coach at halftime for Texas, uh -huh. and they and they normally have the interview with Kirby, you know, because that's supposed to be part of your obligation right. in ball games, but. Apparently, Kirby ain't, ain't having none of that. He ain't having none of that. He's going to the locker they, room. They, 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 huh? they, never, they never mentioned it. They never discussed it. They never, but normally, I was like, I can't wait to see what Kirby's got to say at halftime because I know he's got to be furious, but never saw that interview. So All he had to say is, yeah, I'm disappointed we can play ball better than that. I think Look, wait for the second half. I That's think, all you got to say. I think he bypassed that interview. I think he was too upset. He was just like, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything nice. No, know. you could just say that. I'm very disappointed in the first half. We can play better than that. Looking forward to the second half to get out there and play Georgia ball. I think Kirby. That's all he had to. That's all he had to say. I think Kirby said, "Find me. I'm not doing an interview. I'm out of here." That's what I think. <laughs> of, I think he bypassed you know, all he wrote. As a coach, you have that standard little speech there that you give when you're getting beat the first half. That you know you're going to get interviewed when you go in. You have it ready. You have it in your back pocket, and that's all he had to say. He met his obligation. Didn't say squat. And then just went into the uh, go into the uh, locker room. So yeah, we just laid a big fat egg. That's what we did. It was just sad to see. Didn't show up. Didn't and the thing up. about it is, we're the one that's had the top five recruiting classes for the last three years, not Texas. Jeez. Well, we're, we're the ones that said we want to send a message that we got shafted by yeah, the committee. Shafted. Blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, like I said, and we go out and perform like that. So that's it's, like I said, it's going to be interesting where we do wind up. I'm sure we're in the top ten. The question is, do we crack the top five? I, I don't think we I don't do. Think we got the crack five. Uh, top. Yeah. Because we got three losses, um, but I, you know, it just seems to me that uh, they just didn't show up to play. One, two, right. we got out coached, and we got out. out we got they played a lot more physical than yeah, we did. We just got manhandled, which was the saddest part of the game. I mean, plus, let's say it just Fromm didn't play well, missed open receivers, but some of those receivers dropped some passes. But Cheney, like I said, I'm not a big Cheney fan. Offense coordinator, this game plan. I mean, you got. I don't understand why we don't use those tight ends. And we got two of the best tight ends in the country, and nobody knows who they are because they don't get any passes. But I promise you they're both going to be drafted, both going to play in the NFL, both have great careers, and going to say, why don't we use those guys? <laughs> because we had offensive coordinator at the time named Cheney who didn't want to use them. Didn't, didn't know who they were. So. Yeah. So that's the frustrating thing on the offensive side of the ball for me. You know, you got a, you got a weapon like Isaac Naughty, you got to use him. And we just didn't use him, in my opinion, or like we could have used him. But I promise you, an NFL coordinator is going to hire him, draft him, mm -hmm. and they're going to use him all day long. Yeah. Because he's a beast. Well, Black Monday was Black Monday. Yes, a lot, of, a lot of coaches fired.
in, in, in the NFL. But they're already getting interviewed for other positions. Of course they are. We got, we mentioned it's just a carousel. They move from, yeah, off, they move from a head coach to a coordinator, from a coordinator to a head coach. They move from head coach sometimes to a head coach. A lot of times that doesn't happen. Uh, but uh, Falcon, just, Falcon fans got to be happy though getting rid of Steve Scorsese because he's he's crazy. They, I mean, he. He doesn't know how to use his weapons either, you know, so I'm glad the Falcons got rid of yeah, there. They got rid of all their coordinators. They cleaned house, so that was good to see. So, but I think Dan Quinn deserves this day. He's a good coach. So, and like I said, I'm glad Doug Marone survived in Jacksonville. So, but they fired their running back coach. I saw Tom Coughlin wasn't happy with his two running backs who were sitting over there on the bench instead of engaging the game. He crushed uh Leonard Fournette and T.J. Yeldon, so he's not happy. So heads are rolling, and it's going to be interesting to see how the offseason off goes. But getting ready for the draft, Jaguars pick seventh, Falcons pick 14. So both did not make the playoffs. Well, you got to wait for the emotions of the uh, of the of the uh, end of the season kind of settle down, and then make you know yeah, more calm decisions as time goes by. It'll be interesting, but Super Bowl. The race for the Super Bowl is underway. It's going to be interesting to watch these playoff games. It's quiet. We'll have all, all of them for you right here on 105.5 FM. All the play, all the, the NFL playoff games, the Super Bowl, the Pro Bowl. We got it all right here on 105.5. Uh, Saints will be a hard team to beat in New Orleans. So and who are they they're, playing? They're favored in the NFL. Well, they, 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 yeah, they got a buy. Yeah. So. But they're the odds on favorite. Well, them and the Rams and they, have the first round buy uh, in the NFC. Yeah. yeah. And who are the two teams in the AFC? The Chiefs and the. Uh, the Chargers? Uh, the Chargers wild card team. The Chiefs. Okay. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Patriots. I'm sorry. The Patriots. Patriots. Yeah. No. The Chiefs and the Patriots. All right. Did your Steelers get in? No, they no. didn't get in. No. All that magic didn't happen in the no. last weekend, huh? That was embarrassing trying to pull for Cleveland to win. It was just bad. <laughs> just not, you lose five out of six. They really should have lost six out of six. I mean, Jacksonville had them beat 16 nothing. They came back and won that game 17-16. So they just faltered down the stretch. So. Mm. They gotta they gotta make some changes there as well. So. Okay. All right. Just it was not a good so you, do wasn't you a good weekend team? going into the first year. I'm just gonna forget the last several days and just, just happy like last, year. Yeah, just start the new year all fresh, yeah, look forward yeah. to twenty nineteen, put it all yeah. behind you. Looking ahead, not Got any New Year's resolutions, Bob? A lot of no's. <laughs> A lot of those? Yeah, no, no, no to this, no to no that, that, no to that. So, so you got your resolutions, new year resolutions or yeah. no's? No's, yeah. No to sweets. No to sweets. No to this. No to that. Okay. No you got. You got to say no to not exercising. You can't say no, you, you say no. So it's no. got to be yes to you saying no to not exercising. No, I'm exercising. It's going to be no. That's what it's be. No, no to not no, exercising. Not taking any days off. That's no. Right. No more buying this. No more been doing this. No more. It's just a lot of no's. I got about five, six things that it just begins with no. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, a couple more text messages that just no, came. No, no, it's no sweets, no this, no, you know, just. This, oh, this you mean you no to your Saturday morning get together with your buds down there? At the I, I just get there, just no, no, no donuts. donuts, no donuts. Donuts are out. Donuts are out. Hmm? Sweets are out. Sweets are out. Sugar's yeah. not good for Sugar's you. Sugar's not good. Yeah. Sugar is not good for you, Bob. No, no taking any days off from exercise. I just, I yeah. just got a list of no's. And artificial sweeteners are, are, your body says, what are the world is, are you putting in me? But, yeah, I'm just going uh, no, to no, no to as much sugar as forget, you possibly can. Forget the must you don't make the playoffs. Forget the dogs. <laughs> no, just, those days didn't take place. That's just, the, the new year starts today on the second. It starts today on the second. Well, that's when everything starts on the second, you know. And don't start on the first, you know. It starts on the second. It says, hey, Bob, someone just texted in. Hey, Bob, what's up with the Steelers? Is steel curtain melting? Is the steel curtain been melting for the last three years? It's been melting for the last three years. I said it for the last three years. They can't stop a nosebleed. I mean, the defensive side of the ball is atrocious. So, you know, hopefully... They can, you know, Big Ben's coming back, Connors will be back, so hopefully Antonio Brown can get his act together and just shut up and play football. So they got an issue with him, so I hope to gosh they don't trade him, so, but I don't know what's going on with him. He just wants to be a me person 17 player, so Mr. Rooney, the owner, is going to have to sit down with him and find him and suspend him and get him in line, but I don't want him traded. He's the best receiver in the NFL, but the defense is still... They can't start. I mean, third and twenty. I still go back to the Saints game. They played lights out for the Saints game. 
that the Saints stop. It's third and 20, and mm-hmm. they can't stop third and 20. You can't stop third and 20, you can't win. I mean, they haven't been able to no, stop. Yeah. They can't stop third and eight. They can't stop third and five. They can't, <laughs> they, can't, they can't stop any third down pass in the last three years. So until they find defensive backs like Mel Blunt and Troy Palomalu, guys that used to make yeah, plays. make plays on third down. They have nobody in that secondary can But Georgia's plays. defense was like that for a long time. You know, we'd stop them on first down, stop them on second down. It'd be like third and eight, third and seven, third and six, third and nine, and... There it goes. You know, 10-yard pass, 12-yard pass, 15-yard pass. The Steelers, with that talent, six Pro Bowl players, they totally underachieved. So, not making the playoffs is just a not good. But the Rooney's don't fire coaches. I said they've only had three coaches in the history so of the franchise. So, they'll stay with the same coach? That's right. Just change that. coordinators or what? They'll make some changes. I think both coordinators are coming back. I would wish they'd fire the defense coordinator. I was surprised they didn't fire him. I've been trying to get him fired for the last three years. But they keep him for some reason. But they're 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 pleased with the offense coordinator. Like I said they're average thirty five points a game. They score thirty five points in the NFL game. You're supposed to win. You're supposed to win. But the defense can't stop. Defense, you know? like you said, for the last three years they can't stop a nosebleed. They can't stop anything. So <laughs> the draft's coming up. They draft four. They draft and they got the twentieth pick in the draft. So oh, defense, boy. defense, defense, defense is what they need. You were talking a few moments ago about you know, uh, Fields coming in just to play here, play there, that kind of stuff. Remember when the Jacksonville Jaguars first started and you had Brian Sexton as the play-by-play and Matt Robinson as the color analyst, you know? Remember those two guys? You know, Brian's still part of the, that, but he just doesn't do the play-by-play. Matt left several years to go to go into some private company down there, construction or something or another, and he found that he can make more money doing that. But I remember when Brian Sexton and Matt Robinson, they came to here to Jessup, you know, with the uh, Jacksonville Jaguar experience, and we had it out at Bill Morris Park, and, sure, yeah. you know, and we had a good time out there. It was their starting their first season there. And so, um, uh, you know, Brian, apparently, you know, just meeting Matt and getting to know him and so forth is going to be the person that's going to be providing color for him and play-by-play. Of course, I got to see Matt play at the University of Georgia. Uh And I told Brian, I said, Matt was known as third and long. (laughs) And and Matt just started laughing. (laughs) And Brian said, what do you mean he's third and long? I said, that means that uh, Poulos would be out there on the first down and second down, and we'd pick up three, four yards, and they'd bring Matt in to pass for us to get us the first down. (laughs) And Matt said, you're absolutely right, Butch. I was known as third and long. <laughs> as Poulos in there as the as the um, as the first as the starting quarterback, and of course the most popular person on a, f- a football team is who? The backup quarterback. <laughs> and um, and um, but uh, I'm surprised they didn't bring Fields in some, but maybe they didn't want to uh, hurt the confidence of Fromm. Well, it's interesting. He kept his helmet on the whole game like he was coming in, but he never stepped on never the field. Did, so, but, but they said all week long he would play. So I said. The worry is he's going to Ohio State, but it's interesting to watch the Rose Bowl game. They never mentioned anything about him coming to Ohio State. Yeah, so how, how, did, how do you do that? I mean, how, how do you – I don't understand how you can transfer like that. He's, division he's, one to Division one. He's got to get a waiver. You know, that's the, I think that's going to be the holdup. They mentioned that during the broadcast. You know, Kirby's told him there's, there's no sense going and sitting out a whole year. We can stay in the program and Learn. play. So, and if Rom gets hurt? Or doesn't perform so, well next year, Fields, you can start. I'm sure that decision's going to be made in the next couple of weeks. So, oh, yeah. I mean, we shouldn't, shouldn't be in any, you know, wait and see mode. We should know shortly. I'm sure he's, in, I'm sure they talked to him after the ball game. I'm sure that those reports, probably, I haven't seen any reports in the AJC and Dog Nation this morning, but I'm sure they've talked to him after the ball game to get his thoughts on what he's going to do. So, okay. I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's making his thoughts known. So, Okay. But Kirby said all week long that he wants him to stay, trying to get him to stay. So we'll see how it all plays out. I'm not going to ask your prediction for the Super Bowl right now, but who do you see as your two favorites right now? Well, the, Saints, the, talent? the Saints got to be the favorite in the NFC. Like I said, going new, you know, it's going to be hard to go out. And, you know, I mean, there's teams that are capable of doing it, but it'll be hard. You know, they definitely got to be the odds on favorite to get to the Super Bowl. ASC, I don't know. Kansas City, I still think without the, uh, you know, they lost that. Offensive player did the suspensions kind of hurt their offense. They lost two of the three games going in. So, it's hot. The you, hot look at, you look at the hot team the hot, coming in. The, yeah, the, the hot team's the Ravens with Lamar Jackson. I mean, they're, but they said they, you know, it's unusual for an NFL team to run the ball as much as they do to win. So it's all about uh-huh. throwing this year. But I mean, he just brings a, their defense is so good. They can go in and beat anybody. Like I said, they went in and beat the Chargers a couple weeks ago and just totally manhandled them. So 
I mean, they say defense wins championships. So in the AFC, the Ravens are the scary team. But you know, I see the, you know, I'd like to see Philip Rivers and the Chargers get there. You know, to Tyrone McGill from Justice playing with the Chargers. I mean, I see him yep, against the Super Bowl. So. Oh, I see Phil, Philip Rivers is in that class with Eli Manning and, Phil, and Ben Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger's been in three Super Bowls, one, two. Eli's one, two. Philip Rivers never been and to the Super Bowl. With the, which he's with the LA Chargers. LA Chargers. He's been there for years. I'd like to see Philip Rivers break the ice and get to the Super Bowl, possibly win it. I've always liked him, a good quarterback. But, okay. but I think it's wide open on AFC. But I think the NFC, you know, I think the Saints are the clear favorite to win the NFC playing at home. It'll be hard to go into Superdome and beat. The Saints with all that talent. Who has the best Brees. chance of doing that? The Bears probably the Bears. with the defense. The Bears. The Bears. I mean, Chicago is the da- to me. Chicago is the dangerous team in the NFC. Okay. You know, Raymond Brown's hoping his Cowboys. I saw him. He said. Oh, he Raymond. said. He said the, the Cowboys said, do something. He said they're going to win at least the playoff game. Is what he said. <laughs> with a, a playoff game. <laughs> Jerry Jones wants him to go all the way. Of course he does. The, the, he should have kept Jimmy Johnson there if he wanted to do that. The Cowboys. At least they're in the playoffs this year. It's been a while since the Cowboys been in the playoffs. Seattle's dangerous, too. Russell Wilson's been there, done that. And plus, I mean, they've got, they've got a good football team as well. So, But I think if I had to pick right now, i got the Saints and the Chiefs. Chiefs, okay. Yeah, I think Kansas City. Andy Reid's, and I said, I... I got to be around him when Philadelphia came to Jacksonville for the Super Bowl. I covered the Eagles out of the week for the right. station field, but I was around him. I like Andy Reid, good football coach. Wouldn't mind seeing him get to the Super Bowl, win a Super Bowl. Yeah, he's a good coach. Been around for a while. Good guy. One of the, you know, one of the nicer people in the NFL. It's going to be great having the Super Bowl back in Atlanta again. You know, we had it back in the 90s, late 90s, and uh, now have it back again. Uh, with the new with the new stadium, you build a stadium, they give you a Super Bowl, and so the Mercedes Benz um, uh, stadium will be filled up. You'll in the World Congress Center, which is one of the hugest buildings I've ever seen, um, that uh, can just turn into this basically indoor city. We'll have the NFL experience there, which a lot of people enjoy that. Got a lot of concerts lined up that week in Piedmont Park too, so there's going to be a lot of entertainment taking place, a lot going on in Atlanta. Yeah. So. so you can go to Atlanta and have a lot of fun. Even if you don't have tickets to the Super Bowl, right. you know? going on. And there'll be areas throughout Atlanta where they'll have big screens set up that you can go watch it with a bunch of other fans or just you know football fans of just want to watch the game or or fans of that particular team. Yeah, another hot team coming to playoffs is the Colts. Andrew Lux won eight of his last nine, so you know he set out that whole year that injury. A lot of people thought he'd never come back, but he's come back and. Excellent form, so he's got that team rolling as well in the AFC. So I think the AFC is more wide open than the NFC. I said the NFC, yeah. NFC, the Saints are the odds on favorite. They should take care of business home, should make it to the Super Bowl. When has it been since the Saints have won a Super Bowl? Uh, not long. You know, they they were there. You know, it's been. I, Drew Brees has won a Super Bowl. I know he's won one. They, beat, been a while. they beat the Colts. They beat Peyton Manning in Indianapolis in that Super Bowl. So that's been a little while. Yeah. Been a while. But Drew Brees is very good. You know, he, he is very good. You take a look at him and Aaron Rodgers, but especially him. And what is he, 5'10, 5'11, I think is what he is, 5'11. You know, it's, it's like they used to say when you used to see uh, Greg, Ma- Greg Maddox walk down the sidewalk with a suit on. He looked like an accountant. He didn't look like the, an overpowering um, pitcher, one of the best in, that's ever been. And they say the same thing with Drew Brees. You look at him with a suit, suit on, and you wouldn't think that he'd be a top um, quarterback. But uh, he's just got amazing ability. Amazing, Bob. And uh, so uh, it's going to be interesting. We'll have all the NFL games for you, all the playoff games beginning this weekend right here on 105.5 FM, including the Super Bowl, the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl is between the Super Bowl and uh, between the right. It seems there's Queens. It's right before the Super Bowl. It's the weekend before the Super Bowl. Where's it going to be this year? You know? Orlando again? Or I'm not positive. I don't, oh, they, they're not going back to Hawaii. I mean, I think it's in Miami, but I'm Miami? not positive. I'm okay. not sure. I saw that commercial, but they didn't really say where it's at. They just said, so I don't know. Okay. I don't think they're going to Honolulu. I think they're going to Miami, but I'm not positive. Not sure, but I know it's the weekend before the Super Bowl. So they got it stuck in between, but. Nobody, does anybody care about the Pro Bowl anymore? <laughs> that's, the, that's the one game that, that's like, okay, the Pro Bowl. 
Yeah, but you still have a lot of good players in it. Uh, uh, most of them fail. I mean, a lot, no, a lot of them, I know, you know, a lot, of them, them. A lot of them don't show up, I'm but sure. a lot of them do. Bob. I mean, you still have... You still have a lot of them there. But, but they don't really play football. I mean, it's kind of like a two-hand touch game. I mean, they don't really go all out. They don't go all out. You know, it's kind of like the NBA All-Star game. You know, that's how many points we can score. Oh, okay. Well, I thought that's what everybody wanted to see was scoring. Well, they'll see plenty of it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a 52-45 game, I promise you. Pro Bowl 19. <laughs> Orlando. Orlando. Join the fun in Orlando on January 27th. There you go. At Camping World Stadium. Orlando, Orlando, home of the 2019 Pro Bowl. Join NFL's biggest stars at the Camping World Stadium on January 27th for the 2019 Pro Bowl. Presented by Verizon. Tickets start at just 45 bucks, yeah, Bob. I was going to say, there's probably plenty, yeah. of good, plenty of good tickets available. Special access to AFC and NFC seating sections, in case you happen to be a, an AFC fan or an NFC fan. I'm an NFC fan. Well, I, I say that. I used to be for years, but then Jacksonville came in, so now it's a little bit of both. Um, there's going to be um, a player red carpet viewing and special kid zone activities, post-game fireworks, and more. So save $10 a ticket by visiting uh, Orlando by entering promo code VISIT in the link below. Yeah. So, Orlando. You can make a quick trip down there, Bob, and report on the game, couldn't you? I've been to one Pro Bowl. Been there, done that. Been there, well, you've you been to several Super Bowls, but you're going back again. The Super Bowl is a competitive game. The Pro Bowl is not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm not going to miss anything but not being in the Pro Bowl. Oh, okay. I already got that off my bucket list. Is it? You already got it. Been there, done that. Oh, come on, Bob. Just don't let one experience like that taint it for you forever, you know? <laughs> see a lot of scoring. See a lot of, you know, name uh, football players. Yeah. Close by. <laughs> Okay. Well, you can't do that because the next week you've got to go down up to Atlanta, Atlanta, so it's kind of hard to take off yeah. two weeks there in a row or two, you know. Yeah, to go. Yeah. yeah, you'll be heading up to Atlanta to to report on the um, Super Bowl activities in Atlanta. Yeah, let people to know to turn the lights on. Yep, it's very foggy out there this morning, folks, so make sure you have your lights on, on and on low beam. Turn your headlights on and on being just because you can see, you know, a couple of hundred yards in front of you does not mean that people can see you pulling out from side roads. I mean, I know when I pulled out this morning from Tank Plant Road onto uh, Highway 84, I couldn't see hardly much in any, either direction. If a person had been riding with their headlights off, we would have run into each other. Okay? That's how thick the fog was. So make sure you turn your headlights on low beam uh, this morning during this fog, and then just make sure you cut them off wherever you go. Now, so many cars today have automatic lights like my truck does. I mean, they, they, they automatically cut on, they automatically cut off. And, and of course, uh, during this fog, I also hit my fog lights in you know, addition to that. But uh, most cars today will cut on and off by themselves. But some people don't like that, and they'll turn it to the off position so their, their running lights won't run during the day. But um, cut those headlights on low beam. Don't want any accidents out there this morning. It, it's thick out there this morning when I came in. So uh, just be careful out there. Be careful out there. All right, Bob, any other final words of wisdom this morning before said, we head out of the Butch and Bob show? Looking forward to seeing, like I said, the bid open for the baseball project. It's going to be an interesting day. For the uh, lights? 5 o'clock, so have that report for tomorrow. But like I said, hopefully they can get that bid accepted and get that project quickly underway because like I said the baseball season will be here before you know and they want to hope to get him in before the season begins. So Okay. Now, how's the repair of the field coming? Uh slow. Slow and any new word on um that is that one thousand dollar reward making anybody else come forward to say who messed up the field? Only been one arrest thus thus far. One juvenile has been arrested. That's it. And there's people who know who probably did it and still no arrest. There's more than one person involved but Nobody's come forward with okay. any information. All right. That's where we stand right now. With it. All right, Bob, have a good day. World famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear, by the Wolf Animal Hospital on West Cherry Street. Also brought to you by the Women's Health Center in downtown Jessup on Cherry Abroad at Murphy.
Fee Builder Supply located on Northeast Broad Street. The world famous Butch and Bob Show.